Hey YouTube, Pete Turner here and I'm back again with a second video in this series. I want to thank you all from the bottom of my heart for tuning into these videos. The response to the first one, the feedback in the comments, it was incredible. I never expected it to be as popular as it was. And I want you to know that you could put whatever you want in the comments. I do go through the comments, I do read them. And if there's a particular subject that you want to talk about, this is your channel. So let's talk about it. I'm not going to be ramming advertisements down your throat. This is literally me and you and the subject of magic and mentalism. And today's video is going to be about confidence in performance but before we get into that I'm going to roll the title sequence then we're going to try another one of the experiments and then we'll get into some gossip news and things that have been going on over the last few weeks and finally we'll finish with the content so let's roll the title sequence <laughs> So now we're back from the title sequence, let's get into the mind experiment. Yesterday afternoon I was sat going through my Facebook feed and the notification bell popped up and it reminded me of a memory from back in 2016 where I went and visited a particular city in the world and in fact it's a city I love more than any other city and I thought that's it, I want to transmit the name of that city through the screen into your mind. So if you want to play it's the same as always, if you're sat down, sit with your feet flat on the floor, if you're stood up, block out everything else around you and just pay attention to the device that you're watching this on. Now this is not going to be guesswork, you genuinely, genuinely are going to have to use your own intuition and feelings here to do this. But I am going to give you a clue. This city has a feature that makes it stand out from every other city in the world. So for example, if I were thinking of New York, which I'm not, it might be the Statue of Liberty or it might be the cargo house in Times Square. There's a landmark or building or thing that makes this place stand out. So I want you to look right at me and just think of a city that has a landmark or a building or a thing that makes it instantly jump out to you. Do you have a city in mind? I'm gonna play you a video from all the way back in 2016. Let's see if you were close. Let the light come in, turn the lights down. I feel it on my skin. Let the time just go. I only ever really wanted to. Somebody who told me to do. Now I really want to do. Can you take it slow? Oh, can you take it slow? Of course I was thinking of Paris. How did you do? Let me know in the comments if you went for Paris and you stuck with it or you went for Paris and changed your mind or you didn't go for Paris at all. I'm intrigued to hear your thoughts. If you got the first experiment right and this experiment, let me know also because later down the line, I'll be picking one of you, the most intuitive audience member, to perform a one-on-one -on -one live stunt with that will air on this channel at some time in the future. And speaking of this channel, if you're not already subscribed, click the subscribe button so that you can keep up to date with when I upload my videos. Anyway, on to the bulk of today's video, the news. Uh, the reason I've not uploaded so much over the last couple of weeks is I've been hectically busy. After doing the last video, I decided to go on a bit of a tour and I packed my bike with a sleeping bag, a tent, the cameras, and I went on a road trip. I went on a camping trip on the road to get away for a few days because I, I love escaping from everything. But sometimes it's important just to switch everything off and get away from everything and go back to the classics. Look back at the original pieces of material that were shared in this community years and years and years ago. And then what I do is I try to rework them, find the problems, fix the problems, and it's just a little game that I play with myself and I end up with so much uh, new material from the back of that that it's absolutely incredible. So the road trip were a bit of a strange one because I set off randomly out onto the Lake District into the middle of nowhere. And in the title sequence, you'll see me jumping off the bridge into the water. I visited that place, that's called Devil's Bridge. 
Um, it's one of the, the nicest places on the planet. And the first night I just went into the middle of the woods somewhere, threw my tent up and I slept like a baby. Come outside, the weather were amazing. I think I read about four or five different books. Uh, it was just an incredible experience, you know, being able to go off onto the open road and you just feel the wind in your hair, there's no pressure, there's no responsibility, you're just escaping from everything and there's nobody there to tell you, you know, well, you need to be on this call at this time or you need to be in this meeting at this time or you need to be filming this. I point the camera where I want, I shoot where I want. I stopped at a little pub for a nice little pub lunch. Uh, there were these amazing onion rings that were there, it was probably the nicest pub lunch that I've ever had. And I also saw a strange, I don't know what type of plane it is, maybe somebody can help me in the comments, but I also saw this strange, uh, plane go over the top of me and that were great and there were other bikers on the road and it was just an amazing experience and after going away and coming back I feel I've grown not only as a creator but a performer also because it reinvigorated my love for this and uh, one thing that you'll find happens to you from time to time is that you'll fall out of love or become bitter towards magic or mentalism or the performing arts and everything will get too much and then you'll take a step away from it and what will happen is something will just reignite your passion it'll reignite that fire inside you and you'll just be adamant to get out there and perform and want to show everybody what it is that you've been working on and that's exactly how i feel after coming back from that trip and now things are starting to open up i'm ready to film the stack watch explanations and the stack watch performances because i couldn't do that because of lockdown and everything else and get out there and start to film some new stuff to share with you guys because hopefully on this channel I don't want it to just be me sat at a table filming I want to show you the things that I'm getting up to I want to show you when I'm building a car or I'm out traveling um, so yeah and then after that I got back I were at home for a day uh, I packed out with meetings like because everybody wondered where I'd gone because I'd not said to team e where I were going I just went and I come back to like 40 missed calls from Brad like are you okay nobody's heard from you where are you and I just sent Brad uh, this picture of the wildlife of Europe book uh, and Brad's response were just like is there something wrong with this guy because I'd literally bought this little book to try to find like the wildlife in the outbacks of England um, and then he asked me if I could jump on a train and travel down to London. So I traveled down to London to go for a couple of business meetings. Tom Elderfield uh, shot Mark Kirstein's Diverter app, which is an incredible app. I'm not gonna get into too much about it because I'm not here to pitch stuff to you, but the trip down there, I got into a meeting with Laura London and Laura's, got some really crazy crazy material and she's such a great performer and she's such an interesting person she has such a great life story I managed to tie Laura down to film something with me so hopefully that'll be something that I can share in the near future because she's got a range of interesting ideas and everything else so after that point I then had some interest in my car my Chevrolet Monte Carlo so I had a 5.7 litre 1977 Chevrolet Monte Carlo so if you've seen the film Training Day uh, the car in that film, I actually had the same car. It wasn't the one from the film, but it was the exact same car. You're in the office, baby. Going up. And the first day that I got this, it was snowing, it was a blizzard. I think I actually filmed it coming off the back of the truck. And this was at my other house over in Queensbury. And this car comes off the back of the truck and I see it in the snow and I just instantly fell in love with it. Instantly fell in love with the car. And the guy was such an avid collector and I wanted to make some space because I've got a few projects that I've got in mind on the horizon. So we came to a, an agreement, the car went, I'm a little bit sad to see it go, uh, but if you watch my channel on Instagram, and if you don't follow me on Instagram, it's uh, Peter Turner, Peter underscore Turner, and you'll find me on Instagram. Um, during lockdown, I actually built an AC Cobra. So I built an AC Cobra kit car. I really loved building that. Uh, like I got a chassis and built all the panels and then fit the panels and tinkered with it and fit little bits and bats and did all the spray painting myself. And it came out amazing. Anybody that knows me knows that I love cars and anything that's car related, bike related, quad related, anything that's got an engine in it, I love working on it. It's just a passion that I have. I'm always building stuff and fixing stuff and 
But yeah, so that's what's been keeping me busy. So now on to the main event, how to be confident when you're performing. And this might sound to some of you like it's a pointless subject because you might already be confident, but we all have to start somewhere. And I've got friends that are as big as me that are tattooed, and I'm not gonna name any names, they're great performers when they're performing for me and people that they know, but the idea of walking up to somebody they don't know and the idea of performing on somebody that they don't know scares the hell out of them and it gives them the shakes. And I'm gonna to talk to you today about how to get over that, how to get over the moment of having the shakes, how to get over the moment of being able to approach somebody, why you're approaching somebody, because that's often the reason why people think it's a little bit strange that they're going up to somebody to perform. So let's start right at the beginning. Being confident in performance boils down to one thing, and it's this, it's belief in yourself, which is something that you might feel is lacking and if it is lacking then don't worry because you have a saving grace with what you do you're a magician or a mentalist and the material that you're outperforming has been performed by other people which means that even if you don't have a total belief in yourself have a belief in those people and so when you're performing that material the material will carry you through the performance if it's a good piece of material so what do i mean by a good piece of material well don't go for something that's hard to perform, that's difficult, that's going to, you know, make you fall flat or end up with egg on your face. You want to pick something that's relatively simple, something that's screwed on. You know, if you're a magician, this could be anything from the Omni deck to the ambitious card routine to just forcing a card and revealing it. If you're a mentalist, this might be a billet peak. It might be a billet switch, something that's really easy to perform yet nailed on. And if it's nailed on, then the material is at least going to carry you through the performance because you know that it's ultimately not going to fail. Now, I did an entire video on performing bold material. And if you search out my YouTube channel, I'm not going to name it because, you know, it's on YouTube somewhere. I don't want to direct you towards stuff and everything else. This is not that type of video. You'll see there's one on how to be confident when performing bold material. This is just performing material in general. So understand that People like myself and other performers have put hours and hours and hours and hours into refining material so that it takes a lot of the worry out of it for you. Um, not only that, the approach is important. So don't just, you know, some people, some people are confident enough just to walk up to people for no reason and say, do you want to see a trick? Do you want to see a mind reading trick? And that's fine, you know. One thing that I'd, I'd say is, if you're out and about on the street, Get somebody to, even if you're out with just a friend and you want to practice your magic on random people, get your mobile phone or get their mobile phone and just get them to pretend to film you. Now the footage is great to review anyway, but it doesn't matter if they're not really filming you or they're just taking pictures. It could even just be pictures. And you could walk up to somebody and say, hi, you know, I'm a magician and I need to get some pictures of me performing on the street. Do you mind if I show you a trick whilst my friend just takes a couple of photographs? Now there's a reason for you going up to those people to talk to them. It's not just you walking up to people on the street and saying, can I show you a magic trick? Which seems a little bit strange. So find a reason to approach the person first of all. And that, like I say, is as easy as asking somebody to take photographs. If you don't have a friend with you, walk up to somebody and say, excuse me, I'm a magician that wants to get a few snaps for my Instagram. Do you mind if I perform a magic trick on you? And can you just take a few photographs on my phone whilst I do that? Well, now think about, think about this. You're handing somebody your property. If it's a nice phone, you'll get, make sure you go to people you trust, but you're handing them a phone. They're never going to think for a second that you're going to do anything strange because you're giving them something of value and they're getting something of value. And all they've got to do in return is get a couple of photographs. Now, whether you use those photographs or not is your choice. That doesn't make a difference, but it gives you the ability to be able to practice. Now, if you're a teenager, try to find people that are roughly the same age. If you're somebody who's tattooed like myself, try to find people that might fit that particular scene. You know, it, it, for me, I couldn't walk up to an elderly woman and say, excuse me, you know, and start to butt into her day because she's going to take one look at me and she's going to instantly think to herself, oh, no, no, and I cause anxiety before things have started. So try to find people that you think are going to instantly warm to what it is that you do and who you are. And that's about finding your target demographic or your target audience. If you're in a bar or if you're out and about and you get chatting to somebody, don't perform straight away. You don't have to walk up to people and think, oh, I need to show them a trick. Don't think that. 
Another way to ease into this is to get talking to somebody, ask them what they do for a living. And when they ask you what you do, say to them, it's really embarrassing to be honest. And then they say, well, what is it? You say, well, I'm a magician. And they're like, oh, well, can you show me something? And wait till they ask and they're intrigued to see something that you show them. And I'd always at this point say, well, I'm working on something new, but it's not really ready to be shown yet. I can show you it, but if it doesn't work, I don't want you to judge me. And now perform something that's really screwed on, that's really solid, but that person's going into it with the expectation that there might be a failure here. And that way, if you're nervous, you can paint red the fact that you're nervous by the fact that this isn't something that works or it's something that you said you've not got to work properly yet. So think about that for a second. Really think about how that looks now. Imagine you're a person that's being performed too and somebody says to you, well, this isn't really ready to show anybody, but I'll show you. Please don't judge me if this don't work though. You know, I'm a little bit nervous showing you this. And now if your hands shake or you are nervous, well, then that's okay. Now we've talked a little bit about the approach, going up to people, finding people of the right age, the right demographic. We've found ways to either actively be able to perform on them if you've got nothing or nobody with you or if you have somebody with you. We've talked about being able to edge this in slowly in a conversation instead of ramming it down somebody's throat. Know when to stop. That's another important thing. Don't just sit there and perform, 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 perform. Show them something and leave them wanting more. That's important. The trick is the word or the acronym SLIM. Sometimes less is more. That's important, it is more. So now you know that, how do you get rid of the shakes? Now this is a difficult one because if anybody ever says to you that they don't get nervous, professionals, if you talk to professionals and they say to you, oh, we don't get nervous anymore, we go out to thousands of people and we never get nervous. Well then either that person is overly competent, sorry, overly confident and under competent, or they, they don't care about what it is that they're doing. Because if you don't get pre-stage jitters, and that's what it's called is pre-stage jitters, or pre-performance anxiety, then there's something wrong. Because you're not caring enough about what it is that you're doing. Myself, when I'm going out to talk to people, or when I'm going out to go do a show, and when I'm doing a video like this, I've done it so many times I know it back to back, yet I still have for the first 10, 15 seconds, slight a little pit in my stomach. And it's because I want it to go right. I don't want it to end up making me look stupid. I don't want to fall flat and end up with egg on my face. I'm in the same boat as you. So what do I do? I sit down and I introduce myself. And I talk to people. I talk first, I break the ice. I dampen the moment. The first thing that I say is, if it's, a, if it's a lecture, one thing that I always say now is, I'm going to be really honest, I've not really prepared anything for this lecture. Now, I know, I know what a few people are thinking, that maybe that's unprofessional, but it's not. It means that I've got everything prepared. You're going to choose what it is that we talk about. You're going to be the vehicle that drives this lecture in the direction that you want to take it in. And that means that you're getting true value from this and it's not like any other experience that anybody else has experienced when they've watched me lecture. And, and now I know my script at the beginning off by heart. Usually by then, the nerves have calmed down, but I've got a little secret or a little trick for you. If you are lecturing or giving a talk, say before we begin, is there anybody that has any questions about magic, mentalism? Is there anybody in the audience that's... And now ask questions. S strike up a conversation in front of people. Dampen that pit and then roll into the performance. And that's why the second approach where you're already talking to somebody is the better approach than just walking up to somebody. But you don't always have that option. So here's a few ways to dampen those shakes. One way is to totally paint it red. Think about, how, you know, think about what you're performing and how you're performing it. And think about the fact that if you are nervous, don't be worried about saying, I'm nervous. You know, that's the thing. Like, if I, if I, it's vulnerability. Vulnerability is a big, big thing in performance. If I say to somebody, you know, I've never done this before, and I'm going to be honest, I'm a little bit nervous about this. So if this doesn't work, you know, it doesn't matter. Now, if you're nervous, you're nervous. You painted it red. If there's ever a problem in magic or mentalism that you're performing, paint it red. The second way is this. 
focus on material that starts by being hands off. This is the easiest way to get around the shakes, the easiest way. So pay attention. If you get the shakes in performance, this will help you. It'll save your life. Find a piece that involves the spectator doing the work. Find a piece that's done in the spectator's hands. So you're not taking a deck of cards when you start and when you and you're like this, you're not worrying about it. The deck's on the table, you bring the deck out, you put it on the table, and you sit and you put your hands on your lap and you just talk. You put your hands in front of you and keep hold of them. If you feel your hands start to shake, put your hands behind your back for a second or in front of your face and rub them together. Pick the deck up for me. If it's something with a deck of cards, if it's something with coins, take the coins off the table for me. Yeah, and, and now do it in their hands. And by the time you've performed that first routine, the shakes have gone. And now you can roll into a routine. So the sound on the camera just went off just as I was finishing the point where I was saying, and now you can roll into a routine that requires the use of your hands because you're no longer shaking. Think about that, that's the greatest piece of advice that you can get given when it comes to confidence and building up your own confidence. Find friends and family that are gonna be critical of your own performances to give you honest advice because there's nothing worse than surrounding yourself with yes men, and I've talked about this in the past. Get rid of the groups on Instagram where they're all saying how wonderful the performances are that you're doing. Get rid of the groups on Facebook that are telling you how amazing the performances are that you're performing and find yourself people that are gonna say, no, that's terrible, this is why it's terrible. No, that's bad, this could change, I don't like that. Now listen to me carefully, because this is important. Don't pay attention to everybody that says that to you. Because if I paid attention to all the people that didn't like all the ways that I were doing things, I'd end up changing who I am to adapt to become them. I'm talking about people that have good, honest, constructive feedback, things that take what you're doing to the next level. And we all have soundboards. I have a soundboard, whenever I come up with anything, I'll bounce off that soundboard, I'll design ideas, they'll design ideas, I'll read things and we'll jam and we end up coming up with things that are amazing. You know, I love having a soundboard uh, at my side to be able to call. I have a number of people I can call to jam ideas with. And some of the greatest mentalists that I found, uh, Michael Murray, you know, Mark Shandow, I enjoy chatting and jamming with Mark Lemon, the guy's an absolute genius. And we're always bouncing ideas backwards and forwards. I used to chat with Atlas Brookings a lot before he went off of social media. And Atlas, again, is one of those guys that has such a unique perspective on the way things are done. And what happens is that once you get an idea and it gets knocked about those people, they'll tell you if it's good or it's bad. And they won't let you go out there and make an embarrassment of yourself. And the last point that I wanna to make today is about hecklers. Now the next video that's gonna be on this channel is gonna be dedicated to destroying hecklers, winning over hecklers, bringing hecklers on side, ignoring hecklers, because hecklers are the number one way that you can lose your cool and nerve in performance. And that's one thing that you don't wanna do. You don't wanna lose your cool. You've got to be in control of that situation 110%. And I'm gonna teach you the tips, the tricks, the lines that I've developed over the years to keep hecklers at bay and control the way that they behave so that the outcome of the performance is exactly how you want it to be. Because that's ultimately the most important thing, the experience for the audience. So just to quickly recap, remember guys, don't worry about approaching people if you have a reason to approach them. If you are approaching them casually and socially, don't always roll straight into a trick. Don't perform for too long. Give them a little bit. If you're worried at all, paint it red. Perform a routine that requires no hands so that you get used to the shakes before it comes to your turn to actually handle the prop or the deck or the coins, whatever. And lastly, tune into the next video so that you can see how I deal with hecklers so until next time guys i really hope you've enjoyed this video let me know in the comments your thoughts on the subjects that you want to talk about because this really is your channel and like i said about the lecture we were talking about earlier you're going to be the voice that dictates the direction of the way that i film and shoot these videos so until next time take care guys talk soon